I regard Paul Szyletsky as one of the greatest heroes of the Great Famine. He is largely forgotten in Ireland, although there are some attempts now to recover the memory of his great work. In Poland, he's better known as a nationalist and as a famous explorer. And in Australia, where he did his exploration, there is actually a statue commemorating what he did. We hope one day there might be a statue in Ireland. So who was Szyletsky? He was born in Poland at a time when Poland was divided between Russia and Prussia. In 1830, there was a rebellion to try and win independence for Poland. It was unsuccessful, and at that point, Szyletsky left his home country. He moved to London, but shortly afterwards, he relocated to Australia, where he was an explorer and a geologist. It's now thought he was the first person to discover gold in Australia. He was accompanied, apparently, by an Irish convict and by an Aborigine. So he was very um, dynamic, brave, and physically very, very strong. One year ago, uh, me and my students, uh, we made this comic book. It was a project, it was a cooperation between three schools, uh, two here in Ireland, Polish Saturday School in Dublin, and Polish Saturday School in Athlone. We uh, had a co cooperation with a Polish school in uh, Poland, and we did this comic book about Paweł Edmund Strzelecki. Why, did, why we did that? Uh, because um, Strzelecki is is famous uh, mostly uh, because of the discovering of a mountain Kościuszko. And for Polish people here in Ireland and Irish people, he's known by uh, his help for uh, Irish people during the Great Famine. And uh, that's why we choose this uh, great hero uh, to do this uh, comic book. And this comic book uh, was uh, drawn by Polish student in Poland uh, with text in Polish and translated in Irish uh, by Polish student here in Ireland. I think it's a great project uh, because we, I uh, teach my students about Strzelecki and now we have a book about Strzelecki as well. He returned to Britain and he returned at a time when the potato blight was appearing in Ireland. In 1847 the crop failed again and had a devastating impact. At this stage a number of relief organisations were established throughout the world. The largest relief organisation was established in London at the end of 1846, the British Relief Association for the Relief of Distress in Ireland and in Scotland, where the blight had also appeared. It was founded by a London banker, Lionel de Rothschild. It started to meet regularly at the beginning of 1847, and within days of it being formed, Szyletsky attended one of the meetings and he offered his services on a volunteer basis. He didn't want any payment to go to the west of Ireland and to start distributing relief. They accepted and so in January, in the midst of a really big snowstorm, Szyletsky travelled to the west of Ireland. He was going to make his base Westport in County Mayo, one of the most devastated areas in the whole of Ireland. As soon as he arrived there, he wrote back saying, people are not exaggerating the extent of the awfulness of the situation here. And he wrote about the children. He had such compassion for children, even though he never married and was never a father. His heart went out to the children. Westport, January 29th, 1847. At uh, Carrick-on-Shannon, I found the poorhouse and the hospital crowded with half-naked and emaciated men, women and children. A prey to dysentery and fever which terminated fatally. The number of daily deaths exceeded the supply of coffins which the place could furnish. Between Carrick and Sligo, numberless straggling and ragged families were observed some crawling, some squatted on the roadside, through utter exhaustion, all bearing downcast, broken and worn out countenances. Fearful results of starvation, sickness and exposure to the inclemency of the weather, which alternated with rain 
and snow. 29th January 1847, Westport, County Mayo. In the locality of Ballina, Foxford, Swineford, Castlebar, the desolate aspect of the country is more fearful still. The population seems as if paralyzed and helpless, more ragged and squalid, here fearfully dejected, there stoically resigned to death. There again, as if conscious of some greater forthcoming evil, they are deserting their hearts and families. Of the fate, gloomy and awful, which overhangs the whole population, that of the poor children and the babies at the breasts of their emaciated and enervated mothers excites the deepest feelings of commiseration. 10th of February, 1847, Belmullet, County Mayo. Equally painful is to observe that the destitution, which was hitherto impairing but the physical frame of the population, should begin now to extend to its painful influence over the moral feelings. And even those sacred ties for which Irish families have been proverbial, for instances of recklessness, of mothers to their children, those of adults to their aged parents, are as frequent as the consequences of such recklessness are melancholy. Being the practical person he was, Shiletsky set about giving relief instantly. He asked what was the maximum, not the minimum, that he could give, and he devised a scheme. Initially, it was in Westport, it then spread to Mayo, and it then spread to the whole of the west of Ireland. His idea was to feed the school children. And so every child who attended a school was given a new suit of clothing and every day was fed on one condition that they washed their hands. And as we know from the current pandemic, washing hands is one of the major ways of preventing the spread of disease. So he was very ahead of his time and very thoughtful in what he did. My name is Magdalena Grzyszkiewicz and I'm a Polish language teacher in Polish school in Atlon. Uh, together with our kids, uh, we were involved in this project promoting uh, our Polish hero that is forgotten, unfortunately. And his great link between Polish people and Irish people. Um, and he was greatly involved during the Great Famine in Ireland. I would like to read a little piece from this comic book that our kids uh, prepared. 1846 is the beginning of the Great Famine in Ireland. Strzelecki joined the committee helping the starving Irish. He not only organized the delivery of food and clothes to the Irish, but also helped them set up for the future. My name is Barbara Stachowska. I'm from Poland. I'm from Mazuria. This is the part of Poland between Gdańsk and Warsaw. Uh, I'm proud of uh, Strzelecki because uh, he fed the starving children uh, in the time of famine. Uh, in Ireland, that's been very, very um, hard time for Irish people, and I'm so proud. We have a some Polish guy who help you help children, help Irish children, and that's it. My name is Alicia Stelmaszczyk, and I live in Athlone, and my family is from Elk, which is in the northeast of Poland. And Count Strzelecki is a hero to me because. He saved many families during the Great Famine. Um, he provided them with food, food, clothing, and um, in schools he taught children and he also taught them how to wash their hands and just basic hygiene. My name is Simon. I'm from Azuria in Poland. I'm part of Strzelecki because I know that someone that was Polish and he Lived in Ireland, like me. Westport, March 15, 1847. No pen can describe the distress by which I am surrounded. It has actually 
reached such a degree of lamentable extreme that it becomes above the power of exaggeration and misapprehension. You may now believe anything which you hear and read, because what I actually see surpasses whatever I read of past and present calamities. Westport, March 25th, 1847. I'm sorry to report to you that uh, during the last week the distress has become more pressing upon the people and that melancholy cases of deaths occurring on the public roads and in the streets are more frequent. Yesterday, a countrywoman between here and the harbour, one mile distance, walking with four children, squatted against the wall on which the heat and light reflected powerfully. Some hours after, two of her children were corpses, and she and the two remaining ones taken lifeless to the barracks. Today in Westport, similar melancholy occurrences took place. April 14, 1847, Sligo. Out of upwards of uh, 1,000 inmates in the Castlery workhouse, I found 800 sick. And at the moment of my visit, 20 coffins left the house by one door, while by another 40 applicants had been refused admission to it. In the Boyle Union, the misery exhibits also its worst features. For at the boil, on the morning of Sunday last, I found five corpses lying in the street, which created no sensation amongst its inhabitants. My name is Marta Stelmaszczyk. I currently live in Atlone. I come from Poland, from a little town called Ełk. And today I would like to talk to you about Count Strzelecki, Paweł Edmund Strzelecki, who was, if not the first Polish person, one of the uh, most famous Polish people who visited Ireland during very difficult times, during the Great Irish Famine. He came to Ireland uh, along with the British Relief Association and he was sent to work with people in Mayo, Sligo and Donegal, where the west of Ireland was the worst stricken uh, and they were rebel counties, so there's not much relief and not many people were brave enough to come and help people. Uh, he's uh, for me as a Polish person, uh, he's an absolute hero. He devoted his time in Ireland to bringing direct relief to uh, poverty-stricken, hunger-stricken people who were dying on the sides of the roads. He was a revolutionary person who introduced a new program of delivering help to children. Rather than distribu distributing uh, help through parents and families, he noticed that there is much more to do when it comes to children. He encouraged them to come to school by offering food, clothing and education. Uh, he was an amazing person to uh, fulfill his ideas and he was brave to do it. Um, his perseverance in his ideas uh, brought huge relief to families, to children around all Ireland where not many people would go to those west wilds of Ireland. Uh, so I believe that Strzelecki deserves an important place in Irish history, the same as Polish history, because he devoted his uh, time to bringing help and relief to suffering in Ireland. I admire about Strzelecki, his work ethic, how much he worked, uh, obviously not being paid for it. Uh, he did everything on his own uh, without any, well, with sponsors, but without actually earning money from it. Uh, his absolute need to learn new things, uh, traveling to new places and learning new languages, learning new skills and, you know, surveying, surveying this, surveying that. It's, it's a really admirable trait that I, I would like to have myself. Hi, my name is Anthony. Um, I am from uh, Częstochowa in Poland, now I live in Atlone and I am proud of Strzelecki because during the Great Famine in Ireland he saved over 200,000 Irish children. Strzelecki is very special because he was one of very few Polish people to help uh, countries abroad uh, apart from Poland. 
Hello, my name is Pavo. We're here today in Phoenix Park in front of the Papal Cross where Pope John Paul II came to visit around 40 years ago today. To me, Count Strzelecki was a very well-rounded individual. Once he returned, obviously, from those travels to, to Great Britain, where he was sort of based after leaving Poland, um, and once the time came for him to be involved with the British Relief Aid uh, sort of fund and, and the help uh, that was being given here towards the Irish people um, throughout the famine, I guess he was very well prepared for, for that scenario. Um, and what, what in my mind would make him an admirable figure is truly sort of, you know, his dedication to the task in that he was able to devote three years of his time volunteering um, simply just to save the people of a country that he hadn't really had too many ties with before. He was ready to provide his generosity, his time, um, his work ethic and basically devote himself to the task of helping the Irish people. My name is Maria. Strzelecki. Strzelecki is a Polish hero. A Polish hero. Who? Who? Fed. Starving. Starving kids. He's like me. By the beginning of 1848, almost 200,000 children were being fed daily in the west of Ireland as a result of this innovative scheme. He must have saved thousands of lives. Unfortunately, at that point, the funds of the British Relief Association had almost dried up. Szyletsky approached the Prime Minister, Lord John Russell, and asked would the government take over the running of this very important scheme. Russell agreed, but he then passed it on to the head of the Treasury, Charles Trevelyan, and Trevelyan said it was not possible. So as a result of this, in the spring of 1848, this wonderful scheme to feed the school children in the west of Ireland came to an end. At this point, the British Relief Association had run out of funds. During the 18 months in existence, they had received 15,000 individual donations from all parts of the world. They had raised almost £500,000, more than any other relief organisation. And again, through their distribution, their prompt, innovative distribution of that money, they saved thousands of lives in the west of Ireland. Moreover, they did it in such a way that they gave dignity and compassion to the recipient of that relief. And we know from Szyletsky's writings that he felt nothing but sympathy with the poor of Ireland. When he came back in 1849, he spoke before a British parliamentary committee and he was highly critical of the response of the British government to the famine in Ireland. He felt much more should and could have been done to stop the spread of starvation and disease and to save the lives of the Irish poor. So for all these reasons, Szyletsky is my hero. <laughs>